Negotiating for compensation sucks. It really does. It's a painfully awkward exercise to go through, but you have to do it to ensure that you're getting the best possible payment for your services to the company. Even though I know a little bit more about the process now, I still somewhat dread it every time I have to do it. I mean, who does like more money, right? But it's always weird when it comes to asking for more money since it's such a sensitive topic to talk about. It's also incredibly tiring. Even after you're done with the interviews, the whole process doesn't end there. When a recruiter extends their offer to you, the offer usually isn't ideal. Sometimes you really don't know whether they're just lowballing you or not. But because this comes at the end of a long, arduous process, most people would just want to get over and done with it, settle for a number that looks okay, and accept the offer. So in this video, I'm going to try my best to break down this complicated topic on compensation. Hi friends, my name is Jamie and I'm based in Singapore. If you're new to the channel, welcome! And if you enjoy videos on career tips, productivity, and self-development, please consider subscribing to my channel. Before I jump in, I wanted to highlight some caveats on what I'm about to share. So I am no expert in compensation or negotiation. Everything I know about this topic is mostly what I've learned from my friends in talent acquisition and of course based on my own personal experience. The video and guide I shared could apply more to the tech industry for someone on a company plan, not a sales plan. And after all, that's where most of my experience has been. So it may or may not apply to you, but do take the learnings I'm about to share with a pinch of salt. I'm going to break down the video into a couple of different parts, which will make up the framework for compensation negotiation. So let's get right into the first bit, which is general compensation stuff to understand. Firstly, what is considered a fair compensation? To get an idea, definitely visit sites like Indeed or Glassdoor and do a bit of research on the market to understand the pay range someone in your position typically gets. Your final pay should reflect and correlate to the following. Years of experience, how long you've worked for, and your interview performance. How well did you do during the interviews? If it's not your first job, it should be about a 20-30% to 30 overall package increment. We'll delve a little more into how to work out these calculations later in the video, but definitely work out a number that you consider a fair and good compensation. When is the right time to talk about compensation? Short answer, talk about compensation once you have passed all the interviews and when the company is ready to make an offer. A couple of reasons here. You don't want to waste your energy thinking about something that's not officially promised to you yet. Save that energy for interview prep instead. Secondly, you don't want to share a range with the recruiter and end up shortchanging yourself later on because the way every company pays their employees is different and you don't understand all the details yet. You want to approach it objectively with enough time to make your own calculations to determine if what the company is offering you is actually good or not. So if a recruiter asks you about compensation expectations early on in the process or during your first chat, Always defer this conversation until after you've completed your interviews and they have expressed interest in offering you. You can always say, at this point, I would prefer to hear from company X a proposed compensation that they would find suitable for the skills and experiences I will be bringing to the table. Or, I'd like to learn more about the company's compensation philosophy, so do you mind explaining a little bit more to me? I'd be more comfortable chatting about compensation later on in the process as well. It might be a common practice, but don't send your previous pay slips for verifications over to the recruiter before negotiations are completed. Again, this will undercut you because companies will ultimately use this as a benchmark and leverage on how much they want to pay you. It will be incredibly, incredibly uncomfortable to keep rejecting their asks for pay slips, but you can agree to share these after the final offer has been made in writing on a contract to you and you have signed it. Now, Diving into the technicalities of really understanding the concept of total compensation and what it consists of. Compensation structure and philosophy. Every company's compensation structure differs, so make sure you fully understand from the recruiter how it's structured. In fact, compensation structure could also differ for different job scopes. For example, a fixed company plan versus a sales plan with commissions, etc. This is really to get a full picture of how the company pays you for your contributions at work. To further understand how performance reviews and compensation works in each company, these are a few important questions to ask and clarify with the recruiter. Number one, will there be an annual base increment in company X? What is the percentage? Is the percentage based on performance? Number two, how do yearly bonuses work in company X? 
and are they correlated to performance reviews or set at our current designated level? Number three, how does equity vest? Across how many years? Are equity refreshes provided every year? Number four, is there a fixed percentage of how base salary and equity is split? And number five, what level am I coming in at? Could you also explain how leveling works at company X? Total compensation is usually made out of the following. Base salary, the minimum amount you're being paid every month or year. Bonus, the extra amount you're being paid for your performance at work. It's also given at a higher percentage based on your work performance across the cycle as well. Equity, these are stocks given by the company and the theory behind this is that when you own part of the business, you will then be incentivized to work and ensure that the company is successful. Equity is used as a retention tool and it usually vests across a few years. So they don't become actual stocks you own until you hit a certain tenure in the company. Usually it will be about 3-4 to four years before all stocks promised you completely vest. Equity is usually given at the discretion of the company and some companies don't even give it out. The rest of what I'm about to mention you know, is usually optional and should not be considered part of your total compensation. So things like benefits, your insurance covering your dental or vision, doctor's visits, extra cash bonuses or reimbursements like your work from home kits, educational reimbursements, think about it, these weren't specified in your contract, right? So for example, when COVID hit and I was still working in Google, all the perks I received like free food at work, utilization of the on-site gym or massage rooms, all these were taken away and not reimbursable because they were categorized under perks. So remember, base salary plus bonus and equity, if you get it, equates to your total compensation. The negotiation mindset. Before we dive into the actual calculations, I think it's really important to talk about the mindset you should be in before accepting any offer. Number one, look out for yourself because the company will not. When I got my offer at Google, I was over the freaking moon and I didn't care what they were paying me because I assumed that the company would pay me for what I was worth. Unfortunately, that's not the way you should be thinking because ultimately the company runs as a business and businesses have budgets. The more they can save here and there, the better. So don't assume that companies will always look out for you and pay you. Remember to look out for yourself. Number two, don't be afraid to ask for the compensation you want, but make sure it's reasonable and back it up with data. You will never get what you want if you don't even try to ask for it. Honestly, what's the worst that can happen? The recruiter will most likely push back and you can continue negotiating. On the flip side, don't be unreasonable and ask for an exorbitant amount that doesn't make sense. It will just look bad to the recruiter and it will seem like you didn't bother to do any research to back up your numbers. Number three, don't rush to accept the offer. If a company gives you a tight timeline to accept the offer, say 24 hours, that's a red flag because they are then pressurizing you to take the offer without allowing you to take the time to think through and consider your options. And last but not least, be ready to walk away from the offer. It's always difficult to walk away from an offer that's placed right in front of you. However, if you do see any red flags, whether it be the culture or the compensation or for your own other reasons, be cautious and don't just settle because it's been a long process and you're tired. It's best if you don't even get yourself into a situation where you could potentially be unhappy in the long run. Take your time, weigh your options. If not, better offers will definitely come your way. Taking a data-driven approach to negotiation. So you want to approach the conversation from a very logical standpoint. The number you propose should be backed up with some numbers and reasonings rather than I just want this or insisting on the number just because. So before you get back to the recruiter, here's what you should do. So I'm going to try my best to explain this to all of you. Remember all of the questions that I mentioned above to ask the recruiter? This is where all that information comes in handy. Okay, so I've moved to the table so I can show you what I'm talking about. Right, so... Firstly, before you go into conversation, make sure you break down your current compensation. So remember not to share this with the recruiter. So from this table, you can actually do a total compensation projection over the next four years to see how your compensation will look like in a few years time. For this example, we're going to make some assumptions, right? So for example, base salary, you know, we're going to put in a total amount for a year, assuming it's 100,000 and assuming that, you know, we will have a 5% increment for the next year. Bonus, let's assume it's like 15% of your base salary. And for equity, it's a little bit complicated because there are a couple of things you need to figure out um, the breakdown of. So for example, how many stocks do you own, right? What's the company's vesting schedule? Let's assume for this example, it's 25% 
across four years, right? Do the stocks vest yearly. And think about the number of unvested stocks you have that are due to be vested, right? So let's assume you have about 400 units when you started work and you are third year in your company. So with the calculations, 200 stocks will have been vested. And um, you need to take the current stock price as well, assuming it's $100, right? So let's see how this pans out. So assuming for the first year, your base salary is at 100,000, right? So 15% of 100,000 would be 15,000 and you get $10,000 uh, $10, of equity. Because again, assuming you're granted 400 units at $100, you get $10,000. So same thing for year two, with a 5% increment, you get $105,000. And then 15% of that new amount is 15750 And then another $10,000 um, of stocks have you know, vested. And then you calculate, it's the same thing, right? For year three and year four. Then you can see the total amount at the end. That is your total compensation. Right, so from here, you really have an idea of how much you're currently earning. You've already broken it down as well. So next thing is to do the same process for the offer that's given from the company. So that's why we also need to break it down. And again, using assumption of numbers that they have given to us, I'm just assuming, okay, we got a bump of like $10,000, which is, isn't a lot. And the bonus is still 15% of base salary. And equity is 400 units as well across the four years, but the vesting schedule is a little bit different, right? And also adding on the sign-on bonus, but so remember, a lot of companies will give you sign-on bonuses if they're not able to cover for certain amounts that they have lost out on. Um, and sign-on bonuses are fantastic, but uh, it's a one-time thing. So don't factor it in into your total compensation calculations. So looking at the table again, right? $110,000, 15% of that first year equity vest. And remember, because the vesting schedule is a little bit different, I only took 15% of it, which is... $6,000 and I've added the sign-on bonus but remember sign-on bonus is only a one-year thing so $10,000 and that's the amount you get uh, and then subsequently same thing for the next year you get a 5% increment the bonus um, which is 15% of that amount and then um, the second year the vesting schedule is 25% right so you get 10000 same thing for year three and year four as you can see this total amount would equate to oops i didn't put the last one in but uh it's 25 percent, so it should be the same thing here there we go so you can see the total amount equates to forty thousand dollars and that is your total compensation so comparing this amount to this amount is it a good compensation like it's a bit of a rise but it's nowhere near 20 to 30 percent right so it really really depends what you think and if this is good personally to me i wouldn't take this offer because what they're offering is just too little to justify me moving but that's just me and back to the pretty video setting i've crafted some email templates for you to utilize you can use them to negotiate with the recruiter just make sure you tweak them accordingly so i know that is a lot of information to take in but worry not i have a free resource and guide linked in the description below covering pretty much everything i've spoken about so if you've enjoyed this video please give it a like for the algorithm and consider subscribing to my youtube channel for more content like this and if you're already trying to figure out this whole negotiation thing chances are that you may already be in the midst of resigning so check out this video on the three things you should do before leaving any company there are templates to help you navigate leaving a company on a good note. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.